Hi there, everybody. This is Earl with the Tenacious Baseball League, Tenacious Strat Channel, if you want to call it that. Um, so I had a request from a follower, a person who's watched some of these games on here. And um, they, they sent me some feedback about um, the possibility that there may be people who are very new and uh, to Stratomatic. So if you're new to this, let me just explain. This is a channel that is based on a game called Stratomatic Baseball. Um, we're playing baseball games that are simulated via a cards and dice mechanism called Stratomatic. It's been around for 50 years and then some. And um, there's also a computer version. I will mention right off the bat that there is that. Um, I already have a comment here. I'm, I'm, I'll answer some comments here in a moment. Um, but... Um, so if you have any questions about this, but this is, so, um, there, there's a computer version. Um, it's very good if you want to, you can, you can do things kind of quickly, but the, so I, I do mostly almost all what is cards and dice, which is the original way that it was done. Um, it's takes a little more time. I find it a little more relaxing, um, and I think it also allows you to spend more time thinking about it. I know if I play a computer game, I rush. So, um, what I wanted to do... but So, I got some feedback saying, what if there are people who don't really understand what all is going on? And I thought to myself, you know, the original reason I started this channel was to cater to those, not only to cater to those, but more to try to touch people touch that's kind of a weird word to say to um uh grab on to people who have never played this game before and to show them what it's about and to bring them in so that then they feel comfortable enough to buy a game uh to buy the stratomatic game the baseball game and play it themselves and to have fun with it and <clears throat> on one hand i think my videos have helped to do that. I know there's several guys who have bought games because of it. I just talked with a guy on Tabletop's channel, Ken Castro, who um, he's commented on here a number of times, and it's awesome. But I know he just bought again for the first time in many, many years because of these. So that that's great, and I'm glad that these videos are hitting people, and I think they'll continue to do that. But what I would really like to do is make sure that I'm not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, which the baby is, I thought YouTube would be a great opportunity to show and to get, especially millennials, because I feel like the millennial crowd and younger are the ones um, who are the big users of this medium. And so what I'm going to start doing here when I have little bits of time is to try to do short tutorials, and this is already three minutes long, so this won't be that short, but I'm um, going to try to break it up into small pieces and try to sort of piece them together so that someone who's just starting out can start. And what I'll do is I'll, maybe I'll make an intro video for those who don't subscribe and say, um, this is the first video. Um, this is what it's about. Um, and, and let's take it from a very high cut to start because I'm going to assume that you don't really know what Stratomatic is about. I've just described to you that it's a cards and dice game. You might say, what is a cards and dice game? Well, let me get out what the cards are and the dice are and what the first tutorial is going to be as I turn this around is going to be on the dice. Um, but, I mean, we will also introduce the cards too, but it's mostly about the dice, because I think that's the first step to understanding Stratomatic, is to understand, um, well, <laughs> the first step to strat understanding Stratomatic is probably to have a fundamental understanding of baseball. Um, but having said that, let's, let's assume that you have had some exposure to baseball at this point. The next step, I think, is to understand what, why we're rolling these dice, okay? So let's start out here, and this is not an advertisement for anybody. Let's take the cards first. So every at bat, so you, when you think of baseball, you think of at bats. You have a pitcher, you have a hitter. If you have two teams, you have one in the field, 
let's say the home team, they start out in the field, the pitcher is going to be on the mound. He has attributes. The hitter is going to be in the batter's box, the leadoff hitter. He has attributes. Those are manifested in cards. Now I'm going to show you the basic cards. This is called the basic side of the cards. And um, I don't know if I can zoom anymore. Maybe I can. I guess I can. Good. These are the basic side of the cards. So when I show you two cards um, like this, these are the hitter. Now, Adrian Beltre wouldn't be a leadoff hitter, but I'm just showing him because I just grabbed a, a hitter's card out of, the, out of the Texas deck. That's going to be one of the games I play next. Texas. Clayton Kershaw, pitcher for the Dodgers. Here is a pitcher card, okay? As you can see, there's lots of choices here. Each column has a number of different outcomes. The outcomes are based on rolling dice, as you might imagine. And we'll take out a D22. So there are four dice that are utilized in Stratomatic game. Okay, so you might say, what does that mean? What do the dice mean? Okay, so if I roll the dice, we, we always end up with one, one die that is completely different than the other two in these D6s. So if you're new to dice, a D6 means it's a die that has six sides. One, two, three, and four, five, six. Six sides. D20, so you have three D6s and a D20. 20-sided 20 die, okay? These are very common in gaming, uh, especially like Dungeons and & Dragons and things like that. Um, but the, D, the three D6s, one is going to stand out from the other two. I usually use white for the one that stands out, and or this is kind of off-white. And I'll choose a color based on the home team. I didn't do that this time. I would use blue for the Dodgers, but I just grabbed the reds because they're here. So when we roll the dice, so let's just say this is the leadoff hitter. You've got your hitter and you got your pitcher. You roll these dice, let's just say it came up 2-6. Um, let's not say that. Let's say, let's just explain it to you. One, two, three on this singular white die. The singular white die counts for these headers here. If it's one, two, or three, it's going to be off of the hitter's card. One, two, three. If it's four or five or six, it will be off the pitcher card. Four, five, six. Okay, and this is in basic. It gets a little more complicated in advance, but let's just stick with basic for now because if you understand this, I think we can then take it maybe in the next video to the next level, which would be um, the advanced. So, okay, so let's just say you got the two that we talked about. What does that mean? Okay, well, that means that we look across these cards, and that means because it's in one, two, or three, it's going to be on the hitter's card. So we go to two, and then you go to six. You add these two dice together. See, so you, you total those. So as you can see, you go anywhere from two to 12 because those are the only results that can come from adding those two. You can't get a one because adding two, you can't add, there's no zero. <laughs> You can't get a 13 because you don't have a 7. So you understand that that's how it works. So you get a 2-6, you go down through here. And 6 is a little weird one to mention because you see that there's a split chance here. But I'll talk more about that in another video. I think right now what we want to do is focus in on simplistics and say, what this does is it shows you, uh, maybe I'll even touch on the splits here, but this shows you, this gives you a chance and decides whether the at bat is going to be, or plate appearance is going to be batter dependent or pitcher dependent. Um, Stratomatic has decided that the, the mechanism for their game will be that you're probably going to end up with about half from each side. And that way it balances, balances itself out. The hitter is going to have his card tailored so that there's probably an average pitcher card that they use. I'm guessing that so what you do is is that you take whatever the average pitcher card is. I don't know what that would equal for a hitter. And then you take whatever the add-on is and you calculate how many chances are going to be good chances for him to either to reach base via hit or walk. Again, I'm hoping that you have a baseball knowledge. If you don't, I could make another video and saying, okay, well, we're going to teach you baseball. <laughs> um, I'm hoping that's not the case. So um, so what you're doing is you're deciding with the white die whether it's going to be a hitter's, a hitter-dependent at bat or a pitcher-dependent at bat. 
And then what you do is you narrow it down further with this. Now, what you'll often see is one column tends to be concentrated in the off, we'll say the, the good chances for a hitter and the bad chances for a pitcher. And then sometimes you'll have to sprinkle in because um, let's also in this video touch on real quick um, what the chances are because um, I, what I can do is get the rule book real quick because it shows you in the back of the rule book um, your odds. Um, let me see if I can find that real quick. I should have had it ready. So, just because you see these all here, and you know, you might get a card like you think, oh, four and five home run. Ooh, ooh, that's cool. Well, that's not necessarily cool. If you see a six home run straight up without any split, you're like, okay, good, we're getting into area. Seven, ooh boy, that's like, that. I, I don't know how many seven home run without any split chances there are. But, um, so, uh, when two six-sided dice are rolled, so this is for the red dice, there are 36 possible combinations in that. You can do the math, that's the case. Um, you know, six, six on one die, six on the other. So when you add these together, you get one chance a piece for two and 12. For, for a two, it's got to be snake eyes. Where are you? There you are. It's got to be snake eyes. Box cars is the only 12. So when you see those outliers on a card like this guy and this guy, if you see a home run two and nowhere else, it means you're probably not going to get a home run out of that guy. It's going to be very rare that he hits a home run off of that chance. Um, three and 11 add a chance each in there. Four and 10 add another chance. So four and 10 are three times as likely to um, be hit as the two and the 12. Five and nine, four times as likely as two and 12. Six and eight, five. And then seven has a six and one, six chance six chances out of every one chance that you will hit on a 2 or a 12. So you have to keep that in mind, that the bulk of the chances on these cards, even though it, you don't really get that sense just by looking at it outright, are going to be in the middle of these columns. The 7, um, you could see here, strike out, strike out, strike out for Kershaw. He's going to strike out. Um, so you got 36 here and you've got six of them. So one in six chances in each of these columns, he's going to strike out. And look at how many he's got here in the four column. He's going to strike out an awful lot of guys because when he hits the four column, the predominance of chances are going to be strikeout chances. Now in this five column, he runs into a little bit of trouble, but the, the most common result in the five column is going to be a strikeout for Kershaw. Same thing in the six column. You've got a, a, a possible single there. And what you see here is because of the way that you have to make um, everything add up to his average over the course of a season that you will see um, sometimes you will have them double up on like a six and a six. Now, they could do a six and an eight, um, which would be the same probability. S six and an eight are going to have the same probability. But that's what you have to really get focused on when you start playing strat. It's not, it has nothing to do with any these columns across. Those are equal chance. Anytime you roll this die, you have a one in six chance of hitting one of these columns. It doesn't matter if it's on three or if it's on one or if it's on two. The two six is no more likely to be hit than the three six guaranteed or the four six on the pitcher's card okay but what you need to realize when you play stratomatic is that that seven is going to be your most likely chance that you're going to get hit but you really if you got to look at six through eight as probably your bread and butter um if you see those getting hits on multiple columns you're going to say to yourself man that is a nice card and so um you know, Beltre has a single over here, and he's got um, uh, hit, hit. This is a split chance. Hit, hit, hit. Now he gets down to nine, not. But then he gets 10 and 11 as singles, which, granted, those are lesser chances. Um, and, and let's real quick talk about, because we are still talking about the dice. 
let's talk about the D20 real quick. The D20 is used in a number of cases. Um, in uh, What I can talk about at the moment, because we're not going to go into X chances or anything like that, is these chances here. What this chance is right here, let's say a two five was rolled, or we could do two six. We showed two six in the as the what you know what if. What this means is that if you roll a two six, Beltre has a one to three chance at a triple, and a four to twenty chance at a single. And what that would mean is each one of these faces is a five percent chance. So these are these faces are all equal as well. Now, someone might argue that no no die is true. You're never going to get a die that is absolutely 100% true. But just for all intents and purposes, each face of this die should come up, should have an equal chance of coming up. And so that's a 1 in 20 chance. That's a 5% chance for each face. So when you look at this, you say he's got a 15% chance at a triple because he's got 1, 2, and 3. If any of those come up, he triples. That means he has an 85% chance at a single. So when you roll 2-6, you then follow it up by rolling the d20, and whatever comes up becomes your result. That's that's about the the highest cut that we can go for this, I believe. Um, I think that helps to start peeling the layers, and my bandwidth is going way down. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I'm not sure what that's about, but... Um, let me see something here. Hi, Pablo. Hi, Tim. Hi, Ken. So, yeah, uh, you're welcome. I mean, that that's, um, I, I definitely got feedback about that. And, and so let's just, uh, a couple quick things to throw in here. If you're ever wondering, I mean, the best way to come up with, um, what a guy is going to do on a card is just to look down here. All of these things are based off of these numbers. And so, you know, Beltre hitting 18 home runs means he's going to have some home run chances. And it's going to be here. Um, it's nice. In the older cards, they didn't do the advanced statistics. Or, you know, the uh, granted, these aren't necessarily advanced statistics anymore. These are pretty commonplace slugging percentage and on base percentage. But, you know, it really helps you if you say to yourself, man, I want the best on base percentage guy leading off. Well, it's right here on the card. Um, now, when you play advanced, it's not going to be as accurate because you have to account for both sides of the plate. But there are resources that are out there that you can find that can give you um, a more drilled down uh, idea of what each card will do from each side of the plate. So let's let's cut it down at this. Um, try to keep it under 20 minutes for this one. Uh, so that is the dice. I'm hoping that this gives a little explanation. Um, it's really it's really pretty simple once you learn, but you know, I, I know when I'm let me turn this back around. When we're in the midst of playing a game, I, I think all of us, whether it's myself, tabletop, baseball demos, Phantomatic, Espo, um, you know, we're gonna gloss over that particular mes- mechanism. And I'm sure that someone who is um, watching and, and takes it in for a while will understand eventually what we're doing, <laughs> but, but we all try to get into a, a big, um, you know, a groove and to try and get through the videos quickly. And I think in that process, it's easy to gloss this over. So two, three D sixes, there's one that stands out from the others. The one indicates what, which column it goes into. And then the other two are added together. And that added to property creates a probability, uh, differential, which um, allows Stratomatic to then populate the cards in a way that um, really um, allows them to hone in on individual player metrics. Um, so when you play a Stratomatic game, it's not when you play a Stratomatic game, mind you. When, you. when you go into a full season, if you were to play a replay of a season, you really should see a very, very close correlation between a player's statistics and in the game and what they did in real life. That's what they go for. And that's why you see this elaborate system. Uh, In the basic game, it doesn't seem so elaborate. Um, I don't know what we'll cover next time. Uh, I might go through the defensive stuff next time because I think that's next. I think 
if you have a, a rudimentary knowledge of baseball, you're going to understand the different hits. Um, maybe we can also cover real quick runner advancement, but we will do, I think we will do the different types of out chances, including the, um, uh, the, the tough plays, which are called the X chances, as well as runner advancement, and try to kind of encapsulate those in one video. And I think, and, and granted, any questions that you have, please leave them in the comments here. If anything is confusing, um, I'm trying to make this as um, uh, straight, straightforward slash, um, I, I really want to treat this as much as I can that you're a person who has never um, played this game before and maybe has never even played a cards and dice game at all, like ever, like even even D&D. &D. So, <laughs> um, uh, and, and if I, you know, I'm hoping that this isn't, this isn't too high of a cut, but I promise next time we will get a little more in depth in the mechanism. I just wanted to make sure we didn't miss anything because I feel like it is easy to assume that everybody knows what's going on. So thanks for watching guys. Again, tenacious baseball league, leave comments and let me know if there are any questions that you have surrounding the mechanism that we've gone through so far. Um, again, we will work on uh, defense next time. So thanks for watching. Um, follow us at Facebook, Tenacious Baseball League, uh, Tenacious Strat on Twitter. Um, it's at Tenacious Strat, Tenacious Base, um, Tenacious Strat at WordPress.com, and um, we also have a statistics site for the league that I run. That you'll see a lot of videos in our channel here once you subscribe to this channel. Uh, that have been gameplay. Uh, the stats for that league are TBL.RichStadiumDreams.com/slash league. So um, you can check those out. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll be back again with another video uh, about Stratomatic, a tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching. And Strat on, guys. Uh, we'll get you through this. Uh, just keep watching.